Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Introduction to Java Beans. In this video, you'll learn what is a Java Bean, you'll learn why a Java Bean is useful, and you'll see an example of how to create a quick little Java Bean. A Java Bean is an ordinary Java class that conforms to the following rules. 1. A Java Bean must have a public no argument constructor, aka a default constructor. This is required so that Java frameworks can facilitate automated instantiation. 2. The Java Bean class attributes must be accessed via accessor and mutator methods that follow a standard naming convention, namely get and set or is for Boolean attributes. This allows frameworks to automate operations on attribute variables. And three, the Java Bean class should implement the serializable interface. This allows Java applications and frameworks to save, store, and restore the Java Bean state. Probably the most talked about benefit of using Java Beans with your web applications is that the connecting to them in a JSP can be more user-friendly and less intimidating for non-Java web designers. If a Java web application is designed properly, it's possible to separate the hardcore Java programming from the presentation concern of the view. Recall that this is one of the separation of concern objectives for using the MVC design pattern. So, the primary benefit of using Java Beans is to separate the view logic from the business logic. There are several common ways to include Java source code in a Java server page. You can put the code directly into each JSP as a declaration or a scriptlet. You can use an include statement to reference another file with the code. Or you can put the code in a Java bean. Including Java directly in a JSP is pretty straightforward, but it can limit code reuse and requires that even small changes to the document are made by a Java programmer. Using include statements lends itself to some code reuse, but it still requires a Java programmer. Both of these methodologies have another and more important problem. They normally wind up blurring the lines between the model view controller design pattern tiers. Java beans and JSP tags together provide everything that these techniques do. They provide a better separation of business logic from the generation of the display. This generally leads to better design and more maintainable applications. For the remainder of this video, we'll look at how to create a Java bean using Eclipse. In following videos, we will learn how to access these beans from within our JSPs using JSP tags. Let's see how we can create a simple Java bean using Eclipse. Notice that I have already set up a dynamic web application in Eclipse. You can see this in the Project Explorer window. It's called Simple Java Bean Example. In addition, under the source folder, I've created a package called model. This is where we're going to store our Java bean. The first thing that we need to do is right click on model, select new, and we'll simply select Java class. As we build this Java bean, we need to consider the three rules. Java bean needs to have a public no argument constructor, attributes getters and setters with private fields, and it should implement serializable. So we're going to fill out this form thinking about these three rules. Only one of those will matter here. First, I'll create the name. I'm going to call this one Employee Bean. And we'll use it to represent an employee. Next, I'm going to add an interface. I'll click on Add. This gives me a form where I can search for various Java interfaces. Looking for Serializable, after typing in S-E-R, I see that Serializable is at the top of the list, so I will click on it to select it and hit OK. We note that that's listed in the Interfaces area of the dialog box. Let's check out the other items on this dialog box. I'm satisfied that they're OK, so I'll click Finish. Here we see the simple stub of a basic Java class. This one is currently implementing the Serializable interface. The next rule that we have to think about to make this a Java bean is that all of our fields should be private and they should be accessed using standard getter or setter names. So let's start this by creating several private fields. 
private string first name, private string last name. These will represent employee first and last name respectively. I'd like to store their start year. So private int start year. And I'd like an idea of their pay rate. This will be the hourly pay rate for the employee. Now that we have our private field set up, it is fairly easy in Eclipse to satisfy the other rules. First we're going to make a zero parameter constructor. I'm going to select source, generate constructor using fields. I'm going to deselect all of them Make sure that omitting the call to default constructor super is checked. And I'll hit OK. And here we have our no parameter constructor. Now, the rules of a Java bean do not say anything about additional types of methods. So it's possible to keep a Java bean, but also include an overloaded constructor that includes all the fields. So I'm going to create one of those as well using the generate constructor using fields with all of them selected. So we have two constructors, one with no parameters and one with all four fields as a parameter. But because we include the no parameter constructor, we have satisfied one of the rules of this being a Java bean, but still provided options for using this particular Java class with the overloaded constructor. The next thing we need to do is add our standardized getters and setters. Again, Eclipse provides an easy feature that allows us to do this. Under Source Menu, select Generate Getters and Setters. Select all of the variables that you want to have a getter and setter for. I'll select all. Determine the insertion point. Where are you going to put it? I'll keep that as last member. Determine how you're going to sort it. I'll keep that as getter setter pairs. Go ahead and generate method comments. And finally, I'm OK with that, so I'll hit OK. Now as we look, we see that we have getters and setters for every one of our private fields. Now we could add other types of methods to this. For instance, we might be able to create a method that calculates the monthly pay based on the pay rate and if given the number of hours. But since I have successfully created a Java bean to hold employee data, we're going to stop here. Let's take one look to summarize and see how this fits the rules. First, a Java bean must have a public no argument constructor. Check, we have that here. A Java bean's class attributes must be accessed by accessor and mutator methods that follow the standard naming convention. Okay, here's our instant variable declarations, but they're private, so they cannot be directly accessed. However, starting here, we have getters and setters which follow the standard naming convention set followed by the variable name and get followed by the variable name. And we have a pair of those for each of our instance variables. Rule number two has been satisfied. Finally, rule number three says that the Java bean should implement the serializable interface. And we see here at the start of the class that we have satisfied rule number three. Check out a later video and we'll show you how we can make use of this employee bean by using tags in a JSP file. For more information about Java beans, please check out the references shown here. This video was narrated, written, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.